Further to my little vignette involving hallucinogens, um, some people have said, well, what's the value? What can be gained um, from any conclusions that you would draw from experience, the experience of ingesting drugs and having your face melt and then coming out of it? And what, what, of what value was that? Uh, uh, people will say, yes, you had that experience. That's undeniable. It's quite literally undeniable because the only person who had that experience is me, i.e., I'm the guy that popped the pill and hallucinated. Um, now, people will say, what's the value of that? Well, I'll tell you what the value is. It has actually quite a profound value. Um, I may not have proven anything about phenomenal reality. All that I've really done is I've um, hallucinated and a hallucination that only I can experience. No one else can share that hallucination with me. It has affected me. <laughs> Let's say that I'd never had experience with hallucinations or drugs or mind-altering things whatsoever ever in my life. And I was an otherwise a very well-adjusted, sane, um, uh, mentally healthy person. I make no claims to that now, but <laughs> let's just say for the sake of argument. That hallucination is going to affect me. Even after I've recovered, it's going to leave marks, good or bad. Um, all experience does that. That's why experience matters. Um, there's a second uh, thing that came up, and that's about the soul. And I think this is in Pyro's uh, series of engagements with people. Whether or not the soul exists. Well, the reason why I said in my previous video to this that I'm not really sure that people who say that the soul exists and people who say that it doesn't exist or people that say that it probably doesn't and uh, people that say that, well, I don't know yet, may not actually be a disagreement. I said that at the end of the video. I said, I'm not quite sure that it is a, a disagreement. Um, the classic case of where I believe that a misunderstanding or a false disagreement has taken place is exactly in this nature of the soul. Apparently, um, the Hindus believe in the soul, the Buddhists do not. Um, that I'm not so sure about because both of them believe in transmigration and what transmigrates if not something vaguely resembling soulness and even transmigration might actually be uh, an, uh, an illusory or uh, a misleading term what I would say is they may disagree on certain things um, for example, the Western concept of the soul is, I have a soul, you have a soul. I'm a good person. Actually, this is a Christian or Muslim version of soulness. I'm a good person, you're a bad person. Vice versa, whatever. We both tip over. I go to heaven, you go to hell. That's because there's two separate souls and they part company upon death. They stay differentiated. The Buddhists hold, in my understanding of Buddhism, I'm not an expert, that this differentiation is itself illusory, but it doesn't mean that that very aspect that we call soulness, soul, whatever, um, is wrong. It's just saying that they don't believe in little differentiated souls. There's, at the end of the uh, period of samsara, when you've gotten to nirvana, um, awareness itself doesn't go away, but the differentiation of each individual soul goes away. There's no such thing as a fork in the road at death anymore. It, there's, uh, there can't be. It doesn't work like that. Uh, and actually, the Hindus don't necessarily believe that either. They don't believe that there is individuated souls either. Uh, or on a certain level, they don't. Uh, pinning down Hindus to anything, or Hinduism to anything, is very difficult. But I think that this is a false misunderstanding. This is a false, rather, disagreement. It's more of a misunderstanding in the use of terminology, and it's a very good illustration of the number of damaging um, assumptions built into uh, 
so many words that we use. Buddhists don't believe in the soul. Well, what does that mean? You've got to delve deeper before you conclude anything about what Buddhists are teaching or that the Buddha taught. Um, so, I think that what when we do have disagreements, when people really disagree with each other, in many cases, if you ask me, it's simply a case of not communicating at all, simply because um, the assumptions built into the language being used are so profoundly different that one person thinks that they're just dealing with a fence post. This person just isn't getting it. They're so stupid. How can you possibly not get it? Well, the metaphors that are words can mean different things to different people. And I can think of no dumber uh, or more pointless uh, argument to get into than my metaphor is better than your metaphor. <laughs> Thank you.